Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, Whew. amen. That's why I say all the time. I always say that. Sometimes you don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. You don't know what's going on. Just be hollering, Jesus. Sometimes we just got to say it, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Whew, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen. Oh, hallelujah. I can't amen. even. Thank Eric. you, Lord. Eric, Eric. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, you Jesus. You song. It was on the Lamb of God. Okay, hallelujah. All right, well, well today we're going to be teaching on a series called Health and Healing. Amen. <clears throat> amen. And I believe what, what, where God's going to take us at is going to be a series. Amen. I believe this. After this series, we believe that people are going to be healthy and healed. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. I believe that. It may, it may start this week. It may be next week. I mean, it may, it may be today. It may be next week. But I believe that after we get finished teaching this series, yes. that people will start moving into their health and their healing and their bodies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I was noticing people say they really want to be healthy. People say they want to be healed. But how many people know that's easier said than done? Right. I guarantee if you was to really, really, really obey the laws that God has set for us, I guarantee we would be all health conscious and, and uh, healing conscious. But what happens is we forget and choose not to do, obey the laws that God has set for us. And today we're going uh, to be talking about some of those things, and as the series get going, going forth, we, we, we will start uh, ministering what God's said to us in that. Amen? Amen. The things we do over and over to ourselves matter. Again, the things that we do over and over to ourselves really matters. Mm -hmm. But why don't people really adhere to what's being told? Hmm. Well, let's get into the word. I mean, let's do our confession I mean, before we get into this. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can do. I can do. What it says I can do. What it says I can do. I am. I am. What it says I am. What it says I am. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. And not a doubter. Not a doubter. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. And not just a hearer. Not just a hearer. And my life. And my life. Is the better. Is the better. After having heard. After having heard. The word of faith. The word of faith. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by. And hearing by. The word of God. The word of God. Amen. 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 And I was noticing as I'm putting this, <laughs> this, this series together, the government has us relying on what? Medicine. Jesus. What's the main thing that the government have us spending money on? Medication. Medications. So the system is set up for us to be living off of medication. Especially here in America. Right. But today we believe we're going to release our faith. That we're going to keep hearing the word of what God says. We're going to keep listening to the word to what God says. We're going to keep receiving the word to what God says. We're going to believe the word yeah. that God says. Yes. We're going to keep speaking the word. And we're going to keep acting upon the word <laughs> of what God has on our lives for our, in regards to our health and our healing. Amen. Today we begin a process of manifestation of the real results of what God got on our lives. Amen. We're going to start walking in the true manifestation of, for our lives, for our healing and our health. Because this year we said this is our year of what? Activation and, and acceleration. acceleration. So what you put in your life, in your health and healing, what's going to activate. Amen. And it's going to accelerate. Yeah. So today, our title today is going to be God's Creative Power for Health and Healing. And it is ours. Yeah, it is ours. How many people know it's ours? It's ours. Amen. So we're going to read our first scripture. It's going to read Genesis chapter 2 and verses 15 through 17. So the Lord God took the man he had made and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, you may freely, unconditionally eat the fruit from every tree of the garden, but only from the tree of the knowledge, recognition of good and evil, 
you shall not eat. Otherwise, on the day that you eat from it, you shall most certainly die because of your disobedience. So certain things we're doing and we're eating because of our what? Disobedience. <laughs> certain things that we're putting in our lives, whether it's health or whether it's healing, uh, healing is based on our disobedience on what we choose not to listen to. Let's go to Genesis Amen. chapter 1, verse 26, verse 28 through 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen. Amen. So that tells us that in the end of the day, who, gave, who did God give dominion to? So it's up on us to manage and stewards our lives. It's on us to manage and stewards our who? Our lives. So who did God give dominion to again? I'm going to say that again. Who did God give dominion to? Some people say, well, God manages. No, because you keep doing something you don't want to do. So God's not doing it. He gave you to, to, to manage what he's giving you. He gave you... A, a responsibility to be a steward over it, to be a caretaker, and what to manage it. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. He he didn't just you know say, oh okay yeah y'all just do whatever you will. The thing is, if we want to go back to the beginning, we always talk about the origin of things or whatever. If we want to go back to the beginning, the way we were supposed to be, the what we were created to be, the way the world was supposed to be, the the way that we're supposed to function, we have to take it. We have to take the dominion, believe the dominion that he gave us. We got it back. So what? It was given away. Okay, so that's our story. Is that our story? We're going to still say, oh, well, you know, they did what they weren't supposed to do. So we lost everything. It don't work like that. What was Jesus for? What was the point of Jesus if we was going to sit back and just say, okay, enemy, you could do whatever you want. Slap me around. Do whatever you want to do to me. And I just want to throw this in here because this wasn't in the notes. But I just want to bring it up because though I, you know what, y'all, I know y'all had an amazing prayer. I know. But we didn't get to stay the whole time this time. And I was a little disappointed. But one thing I did get when we were here is this is why we keep saying, well, we lost it. Or we don't want to really have dominion. It's because we have a flawed criteria of believing. Mm -hmm. That's why. Amen. We have a flawed criteria for believing. And until we get that kink out and stop believing that way, start believing what the word says, not what our situation says, not what people say, not what the world is doing and saying and what it looked like. We have to get that flaw, take care of that. And go back to the basics, what God said about us. Who did he say we are? What did he create us for? And what did he give us? What is the power that we have? What about Resurrection Sunday? What about the resurrection power? We got to buy in, y'all. We got to really buy in. Amen. So he, respect, he expects us, however, to be good stewards over the glory of his creation, which is us. We still have to be good stewards over it. It's all present. It's all active. It's still going. Whether we take dominion or not, everything's still going on. So it's time for us to stand up and take dominion. Take authority, the authority that we have. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that for us to do that. Ooh, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. So let's go to Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Mm-hmm. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, 
and wilt give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I right. have fought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Huh. So the key is what? Hearing his voice. Come on, Jesus. Oh. But what happened was we came to America where we're letting the system program us. Y'all need medicine. Versus we, we got a way of hearing God's voice now, but now to listen to what man's voice is. Wow. We forgot right. when we came, we, we, we talked about it a few weeks ago. We became where well, we're not listening to the Holy Spirit on this side. We're listening to what the world is saying and what we need and what we deserve. Because we choose to live the world system and not the kingdom system. We keep living what? The world system and not living kingdoms, the kingdom system. But we always talking about the kingdom. Church folks is the always one talking about the kingdom, but we don't want to really operate in the kingdom. Because we pick and choose what we want to choose what the kingdom is. I don't know, I don't know if that's just a fad now because in the 90s and 80s and 2000s, we didn't talk about the kingdom. All of a sudden, now we want to talk about the kingdom, but people, it, it just a, it's just a figure of speech now. I, I call it just a figure of speech. Because ain't nobody operating in the true kingdom. Because if we operate in the true kingdom, we wouldn't have what we have in. We're not hearing the voice of God. They took prayer out of we took out, they took prayer out of school, took prayer out of everything, and now we're not hearing the voice of God. Now the church is getting to the point where we're taking a lot of stuff out of the church. Oh, uh, because the system is giving us money. Why do you think the 501c was made for? It was made for a system that they can orchestrate and they can govern. They won't tell you that. They don't want you relying on God's resources. They want you to rely on their sources. Yes. If you was listening to the voice of God, why you need someone else to give you something? Now, I can understand you have another program, but that shouldn't take care of the church. That's good. That shouldn't have nothing to do with the church. That's a, a resource that could help and benefit the people to have where you can bring over to the church. Yes. But that shouldn't be a one thing that should be taking care of the church. Amen. Medicine could be a good thing for a time and a period that you may need it for. Yes. But that shouldn't be your end goal to stay on that right, medicine. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Because if you look at all your medicines, which I'm finding out now, I'm getting older. I'm getting a lot of revelation. What? Medicine always go into other areas of your yes, body. Yes, they do. Yes. <laughs> so it, it, it may be doing a common thing right now, but it's destroying other organs in your body. Come on, Jesus. That's true. And the goal is that all they're trying to do is put money in their pockets. They're not thinking about your life. Right. So you're not operating in the kingdom. You're operating right in the world system. And all you got to do is just change what you're doing. Just change what you It's a matter of you making a decision to want to change. Amen. <laughs> but what's happening in the world, the church don't want to change. Right. But we always keep talking about the kingdom. Right. Do you really want to live the kingdom way? Right. Hmm. So it says, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord and do what is right in his sight. That's a package deal. You don't get to choose. That mean everything. No package deal. We don't get to, it's a package deal. We don't get to pick and choose. That's just like if you marry somebody and they have children. Uh, you don't get to say, oh, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I think your kids need to move out because I don't want no kids in the house with me. It don't work like that. Mm -hmm. Just like when God tells us what we need to do, it don't work. We don't get to say, oh, yeah, Lord, okay, I'm going to do this part, but I ain't going to do that part. Then you wonder why you don't have manifestation. Right? So, and then a lot of times, you know, when we talk about scripture, sometimes I know some people say, oh, well, that's the Old Testament anyway. He ain't talking to us. Why not? Why not? If it's nothing bad, it's nothing bad. If it's something that's going to enhance our life, if, it's, if it enhanced somebody's life however many years ago, why can't it enhance us now? 
Who said the word of God is no good because it was the Old Testament? The word is still good no matter what testament you in. It's just a matter of what you choose to receive from him. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back to healing. Let's go back to healing. How, you know what? Healing is mentioned in the Bible a lot. It's 138 times healing is mentioned in the Bible. So let me see. So I guess that means that healing is for us. It is ours. <laughs> Why would it be mentioned if it wasn't? You think God is going to dangle something in our face and then say, oh, but you can't have that. I just want you to know I did it, but you can't have it. No. Whew. The first time, let's go to where healing is mentioned in the Bible when Abraham prayed for Amalek. Now, he had a problem in his own house. Mm. But yet, God said, you know what? I'm going to need you to pray for somebody else for the same problem you got. So he did it, right? So let's go to that scripture, Genesis 2017. Did I put it on there? Please say I did. Hallelujah. Nope. All right. So we, we're going to read it. Amen. So Genesis chapter 20, verse 17 says, So Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Amalek, his wife, and his female servants. Then they bore children. So what happened? God healed them, right? Think about this, too. When Israel came out of Egypt, they was complaining. Y'all know that. Complaining and murmuring and blissing that. And he said, if you hear my voice and do what I said, you have no disease. We already talked about that, right? Okay, so guess what? Just in case you do mess up, just in case. Now, I said I ain't going to give it to you. I said you ain't going to get it. But just in case, you do happen to get something. I'm Jehovah Rapha. The God that healeth thee. So when you're going through things in your life, say that word. I'm Come Jehovah on, Rapha. Say, he is Jehovah Rapha. The God that healeth he thee. He is my God that healeth me. Mm -hmm. Ooh, hallelujah. So I want you to see two principles today in the power of the kingdom. One is, one principle is divine mm -hmm. health. One principle is divine health. Yes. God doesn't first introduce healing. He introduced what? Health. Yes. Come he on, doesn't Jesus. introduce healing. He first introduced what? Health. Yes. Some of us would not need healing if we just obey common sense, like we were talking about earlier. We just obey common sense laws of health. Common sense laws. Some of us wouldn't even need healing. Right. Some of us be coming to the altar. God. Uh -huh. I'm going before myself, but I'm going to go and say it real quick. God, come to the altar. God, pray for me so I can get my head and my body to work it. God said, all you can do is stop eating certain foods. You already know you ain't supposed to be eating. You don't need to pray. You don't need to pray about that. Just stop. God, my high blood pressure is going crazy. Just eat the right foods. You ain't going to have no high blood pressure. Uh -huh. We just don't want to do what's necessary to take care right. of our health. Come on, Jesus. Right. So you can't have the right health. And then why you're not getting healed? Because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing with getting heal healing. Yes. What, yes doing yes, with your yes. health. Right. Yes. So the other one was divine healing. Right. Okay. So if we follow the principles, it's going to bring health, right? So now we're going to talk about divine healing. So sometimes, you know. And, and honestly, to be honest, now most of the time, okay, let me say this right, because I don't want nobody to get mad. But you know what hey, it is, what it is, because sometimes we just need to hear this stuff, right? So here's the thing. If we do what we must do and we still need healing, that's one thing. But don't just do what you want to do and know what you shouldn't do and then expect God to heal you. Because if you're asking God to heal you of something that you can control yourself, why should God, think about this, why should God heal you if you're still doing the same thing that got you there? If he knows that he could do a miraculous healing in one split instant and know you're going to go right on out and eat 20 bags of Lay's potato chips and you know you weren't supposed to be doing that. 
or if you, you know, and I ain't trying to talk about nobody, but I'm just trying to let us see the reality of the thing. Because that's what we need, a little reality check. Because if we would just do the way God take care of our bodies, we always talk about how our body is the temple of the Lord. But only, people only want to say that when we're talking about SEX. That's the only time people want to bring that scripture up. It's about say, no, if your body is a temple, you don't supposed to put nothing in it that ain't supposed to be in there. No matter what it is, not just body parts. That includes food too. I'm just saying, but that's what we do. We diminish the word of God to a situation that we ain't doing so we can justify the stuff that we do. So divine healing again. Sometimes we can do whatever we do. And then some people say, you know what, I eat right. I exercise. I got a good diet. But sometimes because we are in an imperfect world, sometimes we still get sick. And guess what? That's why the power of God, God has it away where his power, where the healing can come in. Mm -hmm. So he's telling us, even if you don't, if you mess up, I'm still here for you. And if you don't, I'm still here mm -hmm. for you. But you still got to do the right thing. If God knows that you're going to go out and do the same thing that you were doing to get sick, why should he waste his time? Because he knows you, you ain't renewed your mind in that area. Mm -hmm. You still got your flawed thinking going on. So what good is it? Mm -hmm. And some things might have happened when you were younger. Some things that you might have eaten or some things you might have done when you were at a younger age that you still may have to do that, keep doing that. If the, if the people tell you to take medicine, take medicine. Right. But work on a way that you can't take yourself off right. the medicine. Right, right. Because some things that you might have done in your younger age that you didn't have knowledge of or wisdom of that's now affecting your older age. Right. Right. But you know, if you was eating pork back then, and the doctors tell you now stop eating pork, guess what you better stop doing? Right. Well, I'm going to do it when I was younger. I'm going to do it when I get older. Well, you're going to keep up with the processes. Right. Yep, that's the thing. And then, oh, you know, oh. when we talk about how we feel so bad because now there's something going on in our bodies, Sometimes it's even things, not just physical. Sometimes it's mental. What is your part in it? God didn't put it on you. What am I doing wrong? If I say, okay, I'll talk about myself. Let's talk about me right now. I know y'all don't want to hear this part. Because right now, I'm not where I was, thank God. So I, when I was growing up, I was a size zero teenager to like 25 or so then I moved up to a size two I know y'all don't think this is a problem but I'm gonna show you where I'm going with this then I finally got size four I thought I had it going on then when I turned 30 between 30 and 34 I was a size six so I thought I was doing something right all of a sudden I was a six I thought I was had it going on it that was the perfect size that people thought. But see, in my mind, I thought I needed to be bigger. I've always wanted to be bigger because the, size, the sizes that I was was too small. So it just seemed like one morning I woke up and I was a size 12. And I said, what happened? Nobody told me. I didn't know. I just was getting bigger and bigger. Now, keep in mind, I know y'all probably thinking if you more, wear more than a 12, say, yeah, 12 is good to me. But when your mind, when you're used to being a certain way, and then you wake up a different way, you're like, whoa. Then that's when all these health problems started happening. And this is where I'm going with it. First, I'm healthy as a horse. I ain't got nothing going on. Then when I, when I got bigger, I'm just long, trust me, when I got bigger, it was affecting my body. Then I got all the way up. I was almost a size 16, and I said, you know what? The devil is a lie. I'm not doing that because I felt it in my body. I felt it. I, was, I just was tired all the time, and 
eating all the time because see once you stretch your stomach out you can just eat to your heart's content and sometimes people even when you think you're eating right if you don't do it in moderation you still gonna gain weight mm -hmm. you still gonna be affected so I had to actually begin to I did have a little help because when I got sick I lost some weight but before that I had to renew my mind in that area and I said you know what you can't just eat what you want to eat no more I used to be able to, whatever I eat, it don't matter. I was still the same size, didn't get no bigger, no smaller, none of that. Mm -hmm. I was the same size. But now it's like, no, I got to watch what I'm doing now. And that's where we all have to get to that point. Don't sit up talking about, yeah, I know I need to lose weight. If you've been trying to lose weight for the last 10 years and you ain't lost no weight, then you ain't trying. Because if you've been trying to lose weight that long, you should be at your goal weight by now or at least near it, I'm just, but we want to ask God for all of this stuff, oh Lord, you know, y'all know I be watching my 600 pound life, and I be looking at them like, come on y'all, you ain't laid in that bed for 10 years and not realize that you was too big, that ain't, you didn't wake up one morning with an epiphany and say, oh, by the way, I'm big now, I'm 700 pounds, Man. no. We need to begin to look at these things. Stop eating. If you can't eat it, don't eat it. Don't do it. If you want to lose weight, if you want to feel better, if your doctor says to you, if you stop drinking this, if you stop eating this, and you stop doing this and that, then you'll, you, we could take you off the meds. Your, thing, your, your, your blood levels will go back to where they should be. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Or do you have this flawed criteria of thinking that you would rather be sick than well? <laughs> and you don't know it. Because mm -hmm. you'd rather be miserable so you could get sympathy from people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you go on pass it out on the world to have on your funeral. Talking about the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. The Lord didn't have nothing to do with that. That was something that you chose to not to manage. Right. Right. Then, then, then you got your, your family uh, saying what God did. But well, God took him away because God wanted him more. Right. Come on now. You, 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 know. you hear that now? Yeah. Well, God wanted him more than we wanted him. No, J cousin Bobo, cousin Junebug, co sister, sister Sledge, sister well, all that. She needed to quit eating her foods. Right. So can I, I got one more testimony, then we're going to move on, I know. I just looked over at my mom and I'm just gonna tell her business. I ain't trying to make nobody feel bad. I'm just saying, we gotta get it together. Sometimes tough love is still good love. Listen, it's just so. Y'all know I talked about her diabetes when she got diagnosed with diabetes, we talked about that. And they, her, it was so high, they was like, we don't even know how you walking around. We went on, we changed her diet, she changed her diet. She's been doing good. All, and it took some time, though. It took some time for her to really get into the mindset of not cheating too much, right? Because you could do certain things, even if you got diabetes, you can do certain things in moderation. In moderation. Now she got it. And the last doctor's appointment that we went to, the doctor told her, you don't have diabetes anymore. It's gone. But it was a process. Hallelujah. And, and you know, it's funny because when he told us that, I don't think either one of us realized it till later on after we had left his office. Like, wait, did he say that? So don't tell me that it can't be done because she did it and she's sitting over there. And her doctor's report says so too. So isn't that something when, when, when you do something and medical science lines up with it too? So we ain't just talking, we're telling what happened. We're showing what can happen. But you have to what? Believe. Yes. That it is what? Yours. That it is ours. So a lot of commandments of God was in the Old Testament. You will find out that it didn't have nothing to do with morality of people. It had to do with their diets. Yes. And he was very specific. Yes. So when you look at a lot of things in the Old Testament, he did a lot of things based on the way they were living at that in them times. 
So sometimes right. we want to do things based on our times now. Those are totally different, two type different times. Yes. So back then, they didn't have soda. So guess what we got to talk about Whoa, now here? Jesus. We got to talk about <laughs> soda now because soda is now. Oh, Jesus. Back then, they didn't have fried foods. Guess what we got to talk about now? Fried foods. Back then, they didn't have Krispy Kreme donuts. Why they didn't have the Krispy Kreme. Or Dunkin' Donuts. It's worth the trip. No. <laughs> so you got to make sure. Now, you got to do things. I understand what they said back <laughs> then. But nowadays, you got to see what are you doing now that's affecting your life now? Yes, yes. And well, Pastor Al, I take a thousand steps a day. It don't matter no more. Because if you're all still easy. eating all those calories and eating all that stuff, you can, take, you can do 100,000 steps. Right. That's right. That's true. Well, I'll pass it out. I'm drinking a whole lot of water. If you look at, you might not need to, you might not need to drink all that water because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. But that's you're still eating. You're still up. eating. You're still eating incorrectly. Right. Right. Because it always go through all the calories you've been doing, amen. Right. You went to the buffet and you say you got all this food, you got all this fried food at the buffet. Oh, I think I'm gonna just give me a diet coke. <laughs> okay. All right. That ain't moderation. Okay. <laughs> Where the salad at? And you got to say, now, now you got all these things that's going on, all these health kicks out there. Just always yes. know everybody is different. Yes, 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 yes. So some diets may be different for them, but, me, but it may not be for you. Yeah. Go to the doctor. What's your blood mm -hmm. type? Yeah. Find out yeah. what fits your system. That's right. Find out what fits. You got to think about this. Yes. People, because people from Europe is bringing their stuff over here, but that works in Europe. They, their body types is different out there. If you go to Europe, everybody is what? Slim. You go to China, everybody is slim. In America, we all we have more. We have more obese people here in, in, in America. Because we let a lot of things dictate our finances. And it tells you, think about this. When we grew up, I'm going back to my age. I'm, 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 I can say it. I'm, I'm the pastor today. Oh, Lord. You didn't have that many fast foods. Back then, you ate food where? Home. At home. And the people live, what, longer. And they didn't have all these diseases. Nowadays, you got a lot of this fast food, and we got a lot of diseases and yes, health issues. Yes, yes. So what does that tell you? Right, right. <laughs> so, right. so the government, the, the, I ain't going to say the government, they got a program to go out to eat, use their food that they're investing in, even when I live in Maricopa. Everybody know I live in Maricopa. There's so many fast food restaurants they're building out there. That's all it is. Fast like, where the restaurants at? But they're doing it for a reason. They're building fast food restaurants and they're building hospitals. Right, because they know you need one with all we got, the fast we, food. Since we've been there in 10 years, they built two new hospitals in Maricopa. That tells you something, something going on. Two new hospitals there. Crazy, so that right. tells you the system is getting set up for us to depend on medicine. Right. I didn't say, right. no, to make sure I get this right. right, I didn't say don't take the medicine. Right. Let's, let's clear that up. <laughs> right. Find out. Go to the doctor. Find out what's best for you. Right. But see, sometimes the medicine is there. Listen, if God created everything and made everything and gave everybody the mind that he gave, Who's to say that he didn't give the person that created that medication to get you through for the moment? Sometimes we have to take medication until we do renew our minds in that area to get our divine health, to be divinely healed or, or live in divine health like we should. <laughs> so don't be going home talking about, oh, but stop taking my medicine. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because if you haven't changed your mindset or your diet, that's not going to help you. You got to change you. Yeah. and everything so and I ain't trying to condemn but listen here you can ask your primary care physician to make an appointment with a dietitian if you really whatever your issue is they have they can tell you what you need to eat to overcome it so why not just do that if you can't do it on your own because you know a lot of us can't do it on our I'm telling you yeah. I had to talk to somebody, too, because I couldn't do it. When they told me when I had that, 
They started, they had me taking all of these medications. I was taking three medications for high blood pressure. Three daily. And I would not renew my mind. I wouldn't change. I had them Lay's potato chips. I have that. I'm telling you, y'all know. I didn't share it. I have a special relationship with Lay's potato chips. And I had to get it under control because if I didn't, I could die. And that's when I came to that realization, okay, I ain't going to do that. I don't want, I ain't ready to die yet. I got too much to do, so I'm not going to be sitting up just because I can't control myself because they taste so good and kill myself. I can eat them now because I've gotten myself together where I can say, okay, I'll eat a bag here and there. But I only do, I only buy the little bitty ones. Because the big ones I can't control, I don't know. I don't know if I can still control myself enough. So therefore, because I'm not sure, I think I got faith and I ain't going to do it, but I ain't going to put myself in a situation to not, to find out. I don't buy the big bag. I don't care what the sales say. I'm going to buy those expensive where it's the little box and it's the little bitty ones so I can be okay. And then if I do eat them, if I take my blood pressure, which I do daily, if I take my blood pressure and it's off, then I know, oh, no, you can't have no chips this week or this month or whatever because I need to keep that stuff regulated because I ain't trying to take three medications for that when they all hit, like, like Pastor said earlier, different organs. I ain't doing that. I ain't going to mess up my organs just because I can't control myself and not eat salt. That don't even make sense to me. Stop eating salt. And that's what we did. I don't even cook with salt. So what you like lorries? I used to put so much lorries on my steak, man. I, I served some. I was <laughs> for you, baby. I was dating somebody and I made steak and stuff and I put all that lorry seasoning salt on there. It was so crunchy. The guy was like, what in the world happened? <laughs> I said, oh, it's good. You like it? He was like, no. <laughs> yes, I love lorry seasoning salt just like the next person, but guess what? Ain't no lorries at my house. All that sodium, have you read how much sodium is in that? Sometimes we got to learn to find a way to make things taste good without doing it in a bad way. And once you regulate your taste buds and renew your mind, you ain't going to miss lorries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they also say when you're, when, you're, when you're shopping, don't shop in the middle aisles. They said shop on the outsides. The middle aisles is made for because it's all processed. Processed stuff is not supposed to be in your bodies. Right. They say if you shop on the outside, watch how your diet change. Right, right. Who want to be laying down in bed trying to go to sleep and your heart is populating out your chest? Because you ate some because it tastes good. <laughs> For real, we do that. I've done it. I didn't did it before. I'd be laying down trying to figure it out like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. How many, how many bags of Lay's did you eat? You had, I had some sour cream and onion ones. Then I had the barbecue and I ate both bags, the family bags. And then I tried to, and I downed it with some Coca-Cola. And then I wonder why when I laid down, my heart was doing this. Because I just sat up and did something I know I shouldn't have been doing. My goodness, geez. Okay, we got to move on. Amen. We got to move on. I'm so how many people know God wants you in good health? Yes, yes, So let's yes. go to 3 John. Ooh. Jesus, uh, beloved, I what? wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Amen. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Jeremiah 30, 17, the message version. As for you, I will come with healing, curing the incurable, because they all gave up on you and dismissed you as hopeless, that good for nothing Zion. So that wow. means health means symptoms, health means all symptoms, right, man? All. Of diseases is eliminated from your body. That's right. Everything. Every disorder or incorrectly functioning organ. 
So, Come I mean, on, you got to get to the point where what's most important to you? Or, or you just want to be selfish? Thank you, Jesus. Some of us are truly being selfish. I'm going to eat what I want to eat. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and I'm going to die with it. That's what we're doing. Some people are, are fine with living the way they're living, but then they upset when people don't call them and support them. You chose to eat that and do that. Why are you going to make me feel bad and guilty? What you chose to eat. But then a lot of times when you're doing all of that, even though it tastes good, you don't feel good after you did it. And then I ain't talking about from guilt. I'm talking about from just what you just ingested. Willingly. So even if your situation looks hopeless, we have to know that healing is ours. Even though, even if the doctor said, you know what, we ain't going to be able to do nothing else. We have to get to the point where we say, you know what, no. I'm believing something different. Now, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord, and he says that, Every functioning organ, every structure, every, everything, every system in my body can be repaired and restored to its normal function. Mm -hmm. And that's the report of the Lord. That's what God says about us and whatever it is we have going on. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me tell you this. Prior to, let's say, 2000s, we were always, what, standing up. Now what do we do now when we, work, when we go to work? Huh. <laughs> it's been programmed for us to sit down now. Right. Because they know if you're sitting down, mm -hmm. ain't no blow up flowing. Right, right. If you're standing, what happens? Mm. Blood is flowing. Yes. So now if we're sitting at our desk every day, consuming all that food all day, no blood is circulating. So where's, the, where, 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 so where's everything going? Right here and it's accumulating diseases Jesus. so you think about it when grandpa and grandpa and grandma mm. they live and back in them jesus days i call it <laughs> jesus days they live long why because they was always moving yes they always was doing something mm -hmm. the body was moving yeah blood was constantly flowing nowadays blood's not flowing because we're sitting right when we get off work, what do we do when we get off work? We go find us something to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And go lay down. Right. Get the remote. Right. Turn on the TV. Right. There's no exercise. Nope. So I'm saying God says we got to what? Manage our lives. Why not when we get off work, go start walking? Why not go exercise? Well, I don't want to do all that. Well, what's the most important? What's important? Is your health right. and healing important? Or is turning on that TV most important when you get off work? Yeah. 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 Amen. I, I, I talked to this, uh, me and Pastor Well, we went to this restaurant. The lady says she has a restaurant. She's 90 some years old. She said, how, how, is, how you? She said, I don't eat my own food. I eat my food at home. She said, I, eat at home. She said, I, have, I have yet to eat a fast food restaurant my whole life. She's at 90 some years old. She has yet to eat at a restaurant her whole life. I mean, at, at a restaurant or a fast food restaurant, she says she's 90 some years old. She walks and she drives every day. Amen. Because she chose to eat the right foods, to put yes. the right foods in her body. I've I seen this little thing right here. It says, it's like having a car just sitting in your garage. Mm -hmm. You're putting gas in your car every day, every week. But you keep putting more and more gas on it. What's, what's going to happen? You keep putting more gas. God said it, it's going to what? It's flood. It's gonna flow. So, I mean, you're going to keep having an mm -hmm. overfilling in your body at all mm -hmm. times because it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to the next generation. Right. We're giving. You got to think about this. What we're sowing is going to go to the next generation because everything operates through your what? They're your blood. Yeah. What's going in your blood is what you got from your parents. And previous generations. All you're doing is now sowing seed. Let's go to the next generation. Coming from your blood system. Everything always operates through the what? The blood. the blood. That's why the blood is very important. Yes. Yes. Life, blood will give you life. Yes. 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 That's why it's important to take care of your health. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it at one point. Because I'm like, when we did when we was kids, we didn't have to do it. But now it's, just, it's nasty now. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You got to go around using hand sanitizers now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to eat right. Mm -hmm. Then also, I was, I was looking at this uh, when I'm doing this health thing, you know, doing some research. They were saying, be careful with wearing those masks. I'm like, why? Isn't that supposed to protect you? They say, yeah, but what happens is you're wearing the mask, but you're not getting the, the, the appropriate breathing that needs to come back out. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's giving you a lot of bacteria. So you're wearing those masks. That's why you got to take those off every, Carbon every, every, it, it, it's, it's, it's not, you're not having the adequate breathing coming in and out of your mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. So be careful with wearing the mask. It's, it's mm -hmm. fine, but just be careful with wearing them. The D.I. So you got to stay active. Yes, yes, yes. Keep your blood flowing. Mm -hmm. Work your way off getting, med getting off the medicine. Right. Eat right. Yes. And I know me, I love me some Kool-Aid. Lord no. Jesus. And give, me, give, me, give me some, give me some, give me some eight, one cups of sugar. <laughs> ain't, oh nothing, ain't, ain't nothing like having some Kool-Aid with a whole lot of sugar. And I don't let him do that. And the world don't let me do it no, no more. No, I do not. But, but now I go, and some of them, will, I'm going to get me some tea. No, I don't get no, because McDonald's had that sweet tea. Oh, my God, it's so good, but I can't eat that sweet tea he no more. 50-50. I've been doing good, y'all, too. He's been doing good, but he, no. I got, that, my, no. I got my doctor report. Mm -hmm. I had a fatty liver. They told me it wasn't going to be healed. Come on, Jesus. Now it's healed. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They told me I no longer have a fatty liver because I changed hallelujah. my diet. Hallelujah. They said, now I got to work, work on my cholesterol. They said, it's not bad, but it's getting there. So guess what I started doing? Cutting out that cholesterol. I want to live my 100. How many years did God say? 30. I'm, I'm living my 100. So if the doctor tell me I got to do it, Lord Jesus. Yes. No matter if Mama Carol make them pork chops, what? Lord Jesus. What? Gee, hallelujah. Them fried pork, I can't eat them no more. Lord Jesus, I eat one for you. Or Pastor Noel wants to eat certain foods. I can't. For me, I just know me. I, I, I got to tell them, y'all can eat it. Go and eat. I'd eat me a bowl of cereal or something. But bad as I'll be sitting there playing, I'll be Eat my bowl of cereal, so you know, eat that food. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to live my, they can probably do it, but I can't do it. Yes, it depends on what you can do, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know when I eat certain I foods, I get a headache. I can't eat butter popcorn no more. I love popcorn. So good. But guess what? I can't eat it no more. So I get bad headaches. <sighs> Off of popcorn. <laughs> I, don't, I, you know, I find out it's, it's the thing that is traced through my family. I can't eat anything that's do with corn. So anything with corn products, I got to look at, oh, you know, look you at the boxes, books. labels, and see if there's anything that has to do with corn. So I was just saying, you got to trace your family history. Everybody's different. I love me some corn. Cornbread, Lord Jesus. So guess what? I make cornbread once a month. I, I was making it almost every day. I got to have my cornbread at least once a month. No, Jesus. So, so I'm, I'm now I'm trying to find some other areas where I can eat me some cornbread. I'm going to find out eat some cornbread. So, but, but you know, but there's some things you got to do. You got to, you got to be careful with it. Amen. Right. <laughs> so let's go, <laughs> let's go <clears throat> forward and say, okay, so now we'll look at the name of God. Remember, we're talking about healing. So this name that we're using today is Jehovah Rapha, right? So we're talking about that in the nature of God. Healing as a promise, right? Healing as a promise. So the nature of God is telling us to uh, healing as a promise. So <laughs> my mind went somewhere else, and so we're going to read another scripture, Exodus 15, 26. That's what we're going to do right now. And said, if thou wilt diligently <coughs> hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and would give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, mm -hmm. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have bought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals thee. Right, so we're going to go, we're going over that again, right? So what does healing mean? So that means it's a process of becoming sound or healthy again. So your mind can be healed and your body can be healed. To restore health or soundness, Look at it as a cure, right? And to recover from any illness, recover from injury, and return to divine health. That's what healing is, right? So healing is based on three different things. Three different things. One is his nature, his desire, and his cross. Mm -hmm. His nature is his name. Right. Which, which name we said what is what? Jehovah Rapha. Right. His, his desire. Yes. Let's go to Luke chapter 5, verse 13. 5, verse 12 and 13. 
And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will mm -hmm. be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Amen. So if you ever wonder if God is really going to heal you, will he really heal you? Does he really want to heal you? The answer is he will. He's saying I will. So if you didn't know today when you came in here, I'm telling you right now that God says he will. His word says it. His word says it. So now we're verbally saying it, that he will. Is it his desire? Absolutely it's his desire. He's not going to sit back and be like, I ain't healing her because I don't like her. Well, I ain't going to heal you because you did X, Y, Z. See, sometimes we don't receive our healing, our wholeness, because we think that we shouldn't be forgiven or we think that, okay, I, I was too bad. You don't know what my life was. You don't know the kind of person that I was. That doesn't matter. He will do it. It's his desire, but we have to be willing. And you know what? Listen, stop trying to always want something miraculous, right? Sometimes you got to put some work in. Show God that you're serious. We talked about that in the beginning of th today talking about it. Sometimes we want him to just heal us, but we don't even want to change. If he knows, God knows everything, right? He knows you don't want to change, so why should he? So stop begging God to heal you if you ain't ready to do what it's going to take to get it. You got to do your part too sometimes. And then you say, you know what, Pastor Al, my thing is a terminal thing that the doctor is saying. How many people know you got to fight the good fight of faith? You got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to fight the good fight of faith. And that comes out of 1 Timothy verses 6 through 12. Oh, he already, there he is. <laughs> Fight oh, the good fight of go. faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also <clears throat> called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Amen. So we got to fight the good fight of faith. <laughs> and you know what? And as we're fighting and as we're winning, tell somebody. Tell somebody. You know, sometimes we get our healing and we do what we do. You know, like mom, they told her she don't have diabetes no more. She ain't walking around saying, yeah, look what I did. No, look what the Lord did because I was faithful in his word that I did what they told me I needed to do. And God gave her the strength to do it. Because I'm telling you, she was kicking and screaming. She didn't want to do it, but God had to, she had to go to God and he had to renew her mind for her to say, you know what? No, I'm going to do what I need to do. And it is a process. Because it did take time. First, they took her off. They had her on two meds. They took her off one. Then, now, they say, you ain't got to take the medicine. It's gone. I've tested your blood because he makes her, he tested it several times to make sure that it wasn't a mistake. And told her, you ain't got to take that no more now. So, so, okay, here we go. So, <laughs> we got to just refuse to give up. Whew, hallelujah. So, so. Uh, as we start wrapping things up, we want to talk about, I want to talk about this, uh, <coughs> this study, okay, so, you know, when you, when you get, like, okay, y'all know I'm a paralegal, right, so that we like to research, so I, there's a story, there's a study out there, right, that, about people that speak in tongues, so this is what I'm, what we're trying to do also is tie this in with healing, because this is part of our healing process, okay, so, the study was done at the University of Pennsylvania. And I don't want to mess up here, so I have notes about it because I want to make sure. So it says, okay, so the man did the study. It's a doctor, right? At the University of Pennsylvania, it's a doctor. He did a study. Uh, based on his conversation and the way he was, it never said whether he was a Christian, but I'm going to believe based on his language that he's not. Okay, so he's a professor there of nuclear medicine. So he did this study. He said, okay, I, he, he had five people. They call them subjects, right? So five people, and, and they had them come in, and they put these electrodes all over their brain, all over. 
because they wanted to study the brain while people were speaking in tongues. Okay, so what they did, and see what the electrodes do, it studies the blood flow in the brain and where it's lighting up at, okay? So anyway, this is what they discovered. It said they had five people speaking in tongues. Now first, what they did, because they want to make sure, right? <laughs> I think to disprove, but anyway. So they, the people, none, none of these people knew each other. None of that, so they all prayed in tongues. But first what he did, he had them meditate. They had some Buddhists meditating. They had all these different studies where different centers of the brain light up. So now we want to test these Christians too. So he did the study to study the blood flow. So what happened is, first they said, pray in your natural tongue. They started off praying naturally. The electrodes, you know, it lit up in the frontal lobe of the brain. Then they said, now sing a hymn, sing a song, same thing. Then they said, this is where it gets interesting, now speak in tongues. So, nothing happened. When they began to speak in tongues, there was no imaging on the screen. They couldn't, the frontal lobe did not light up as it should when you're in your own mind saying or doing or thinking about something. But when they speak in tongues, it didn't light up. It's of the spirit. So that means this is what they said. Every other religious practice, whether it's meditation or singing hymns, you can see the blood flow right there in the front. But the doctor said, our, this is his words exactly, our brain imaging research shows us that these subjects are not in control of the usual language centers during this activity of praying in tongues. <laughs> I said, what? It's happening right now. So the Bible says now, when I pray in an unknown tongue, who prays? My spirit prays. The Holy Spirit prays. So therefore, if the Holy Spirit is praying while I'm speaking in tongues, of course my frontal lobe ain't going to light up because it ain't me. It's the Spirit. Amen. It ain't me. Now, that's, that's you know, science is proving our point, which I'm sure it was for them to disprove it. But it says, here it is, it says the frontal lobe does not light up. In other words, they're not controlling, but there is a self-awareness, which means they, they, they're not, they haven't lost, they didn't lose control of their body. He said, these are the words, the findings could be interpreted as the subject's sense of self-being taken over by someone else. Well, it, they said something else, but I'm saying someone because we know the proper terminology for that. So isn't that something, can you see that? When we speak in tongues, so see now, science has proven to us that it is the Holy Spirit praying when we speak in tongues. We're there, but it's not lighting up because we're not saying it, we're not aware of what's being said. Ooh, Jesus, so. Remember that. So think about that in reference to every part of our lives. But even when you begin to talk about healing, go into it in your natural time talking about healing and then allow God to go ahead and do the rest. Because as he's doing it, listen, our body, I believe, and I'm going to keep on looking for it because I'm going to find me a study. I believe that that can help us with our healing process. The more we do it, the more junk comes out. Thank you, Jesus. And that's why we say it's by the level of your what? Faith. Right. What does your faith tell you about your health? What does your faith tell you about your healing? Yes. It's according to your faith. It's what you're going to activate and what's right. going to accelerate in your life. Do you believe that God's going to give you healing in your life? There's a part that you got to play, though. Come on now. There's a part that you have to do. Because if he can't get you on your health part, he can't heal you. 
Yes. Let me say that again. If he can't get you to function on your health part, on what he gave you authority to manage, he can't heal you. Because he knows if you're not willing to be healthy, you're not ready to be healed. Right. Because you're choosing to make a decision that goes along against all of his laws. So, Pastor Al, Noah, can we pray for you? Yes. But will it work? Not depending on you. Depends on you. Unless you're ready to believe that he's going to heal you. And you're going to make a decision to do what he told you to do. That's right. Amen. But I love certain things. Are you willing to let it go? Do you love that soda? Do you love that food more than you love me? Yes, Are you sir. willing to let it go? Yeah. From this day forward, are you willing to let it go? But it tastes so good. Are you willing to let that taste go? Right. Because he wants it you to works. have his taste. Right. Is it worth how, the, how the Bible says, oh, taste and see <laughs> that the Lord is good. He is good. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that he is good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you got to keep hearing the word. Yes. Whatever your situation is in your health, keep hearing the word. Yes. Keep listening to the word and keep speaking the word and keep acting upon what the word is saying in your life and what yes. God has told you Thank to do. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. We now go and bring Thank forth. You, you got something you, to say? Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say what you got to say well, Not bring up them. Okay. Well, I just, just start thinking about that, right? Just Amen. start thinking about it. whatever it is. If it's something in your body, if it's something in your mind. Whatever it is, just begin as we're going through this series and, and just begin to know that God will give us revelation on what it is we need to do to be in divine health. I don't want to be just always looking for healing. I want to be in divine health because if I'm in divine health, I don't need to go to God for healing. I could help somebody else get there. That's what I want to do, be in divine health. Remember that. I, I, talk about that next week you sure well, okay so okay i got some points let me just tell you all these points real quick this is what we're going to start saying whatever god has not planted in my body we're saying get out now okay mm -hmm. every agent of sickness working against my health will disappear in the name of jesus amen hallelujah Jehovah Rapha is my covenant healer, and with the stripes of Jesus, I was and am healed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The same Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead quickens my mortal body. Hallelujah. And finally, I release miracles of healing in my body in the name of Jesus. I believe God for the miraculous healing in my life and in my family and wherever I go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Amen. and that's what we need to begin to speak over ourselves as we're going through this. And I'm telling you, God is going to do it. He's going to do it. By the end of this series, we're going to have some healing happen. We're going to have testimonies of people being healed. Or what shall we say being made whole like we're supposed to be, like we were created to be. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I know y'all wondering how long this series is going to last. <laughs> Hallelujah. How long this going to last? The you know, healing, healing is a great subject. And let me say a quick, short testimony. I was preaching in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Lady brought a man up in a wheelchair. And of course, you the preacher, they bring somebody in a wheelchair. You know, I'm looking, okay, what do you want me to do? And so I went to pray for the man. The Lord spoke to me. He said, I'm not going to heal him. I'm like, what? God says, I'm not going to heal him. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, if I heal him, he's going to go back to the motorcycle club and he's not going to be saved. I didn't even know the man rode motorcycles. But I didn't say that to the congregation. I prayed for the man anyway. And afterwards, I told, I told the pastor, I said, the Lord said, that if he heals that man, he's going back to the world. The Lord says he's better off saved in the wheelchair. About three months later, 
Three months later, the pastor called me. And he says, the man's wife called me crying. I thought he died. She said, he didn't die. The man's wife called me crying. He said that she was going to pray for him. The Lord told her, I'm not going to heal him. Same thing you said. So people, God knows our heart. God knows our heart. Some of us want to be like we are. Some of us would rather be like we are than to be healed. I think one of y'all said that. You know, so we got to make sure that our heart is right. Do you really want to be healed? Do you really want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Come on, she messed with Lay's. They messed with pork chops. They messed with Coca-Cola. They even got Diet Coke. They got everything up here. They, and they just, this is first day. So you know some more, they're going to get meatloaf next week. I don't know what they're going to get next week. But listen, it, but God gave us rules and regulations in his word. He said, do this and this will happen. So thanks. Now y'all know we love church anniversary fried chicken. Y'all know we do. We love it. So this series here is going to be good. And we got to make sure whenever the series is over, whatever instructions they give us, we got to apply it permanently. Comprende? Are we good? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Alan Noel. Appreciate it. Amen. That. Yes, that word was very good and very on time. It's one that we can see that we need, whether it be in us individually or we just look around. We know we need it. We need that word today. And, you know, as Apostle was speaking, the thing that came to my mind when he said, how bad do you want it? I'm thinking about how those who really needed healing when Yahshua came walking, they yelled out his name. They, they screamed out his name to the point where his disciples, Yahshua's disciples, was like, wait a minute, don't bother Yahshua. Don't bother the Lord. Leave him alone. And what did Yahshua always do? He said, bid them come. Let them come to me. If they're in a state, if they're in a situation where they're crying out to me, listen, the blind man was on the roadside, didn't even see the Lord coming he heard the commotion that was happening around him and then began to cry out his name son of man son of man heal me have mercy on me and sometimes in our commotion in our situations in our distress we have to cry out to the Lord that's why the Lord says to pray without fainting that's why that woman who had lost her husband, she went to that unjust judge and she kept going to him and kept going to him and kept going to him and kept pleading and kept saying, avenge me of my adversary. Sometimes we have to look at as, a, as, an, uh, 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 as, our, as our sicknesses and our infirmities as an adversary, as something that's opposing us, something that's coming against us, something that is attempting to consume us. And we have to say, Lord, avenge me of this thing. This thing is invading my space. This thing is blocking the way. So just like Cornelius Alms and his prayers went up before you and it invaded your space and it blocked your vision and it became a memorial unto you, I am coming to you and I'm saying, Lord, avenge me. And I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to fail in this because I know your word is true. I know your healing is for me. I know the healing is mine today. Even if the manifestation isn't today, your word is real right. today. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's not just for our physical body. Yes. That's for our emotions. Yes. That is for our mind, yes. our heart, every single situation, all the elements of life, yes. all the conditions of life, everything it brings. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand with the people online. Come on, let's stand. Amen. Healing is Jesus. ours. Yes. One of the first steps to being healed is getting saved. Come on. Amen. Some of the saints, I know some of the saints are sick, but you're saved. You're better off than the sinner who's perfectly healed and lost. Amen. Am I right or right? Yes. All right. So we want to yes. lead you to the Lord. If you're online right now and you want to be saved, now is the time. No better time than now. And all you have to do is put it in the chat. I want to give my life to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And somebody will check it out. They'll call you back, pray with you. Or even if you're here right now and you want to give your life to the Lord. Look like 
I don't, I don't see any new faces. Uh, I don't know. I see, I see, uh, yeah, I do see somebody I ain't seen before. You might want to give your life to the Lord. You might want to rededicate. This is a time for rededication also. Rededication is daily. Paul said, I die how often? De you rededicate. Every time you wake up, rededicate. So if you want to come up here today to the altar and you want us to pray with you, a prayer of rededication, if you fell away. Maybe you didn't fall away. Maybe you just had a, some issues in your mind. Hallelujah. We'll help you rejoin. Yes, Lord. And if you're online and you want to give your life to the Lord, Thank you, Jesus. we're going to pray with you. I want everybody to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus please come into my heart. Please come into my I heart. repent of my sins. I, of my I sins. ask you to forgive me. And I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, find a good Bible-believing church. And if you live in Arizona, come on by. Right here, every Sunday, 9 a.m. Hallelujah. Now, anybody here in this room, you want prayer? Come on, come on down. You want prayer? Come on down. Don't feel bad about the message. I know they stepped on toes today. My toenails was hurting. And Lord, I was planning on going to get something to eat after church. I'm just going to go home. Lord. So, come on. Anybody want prayer? Just come on down. We'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. The altar is open. The altar is open. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. 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 I got a good report about you yesterday, too. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody else? Anybody Hallelujah. else? Come on. The altar is open. Be bold. Hallelujah. Be beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's giving you an opportunity Hallelujah. to let some things go. Yes. To let some things yes. down here at Hallelujah. the altar. Hallelujah. So for those of you in the congregation who know you have something that you're just yes. holding on to. You know, there are some things in our physical body that are caused not even by physical things, but by emotional things. Maybe we're too controlling. We got stress in our body. Maybe we're bitter, so now we have cancer in our body. Maybe we're not, we're not forgiving, and so now we got this tumor in our body. There are things that happen to us conditionally based off of the conditions of our life. So if that's you today, don't just sit there holding it together all by yourself. Allow God to enter in the space with you. And I know there's some today, if you're willing to just take that walk up here, God says, I will release you. Thank you, Mama, for being obedient. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all stretch your hands this way, please. Hallelujah. Father, we touch our brother right now. Come on, y'all stretch your hands to yes, him. Lord. Hallelujah. We speak perfect peace into his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you that his heart is right. Yes, Lord. And Father, we join our faith with his right now. And we decree total victory. We decree it now, total healing. We decree it now that his heart is healed, his mind is healed. And we thank you for it. And we bless you for his life. We thank you for his boldness to come down. Hallelujah. We speak your word over his life. We command your body to line up, his body to line up with your word now. Hallelujah. Yeshua's holy name. Amen. 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 Let's everyone just stretch our hands to Mama B. Father, we thank you right now for Mama B's heart. You know her heart. You know her intentions, you know her desires, and we thank you right now that those intentions and those desires are good. They are pure, oh Father. And so we thank you also that you are manifesting the action behind those intentions in that same purity so that everyone who sees her, everyone who communicates with her, everyone who interacts with her, everyone who is with her understands exactly where she's coming from 
from, Father. You are enlightening minds. You are revealing her to herself, and now you're revealing her to all of us in this room. We thank you right now, oh God, from the top of her head to the sole of her feet that she is a new creation in Jesus' name. We declare it. Hallelujah. Mama B, we have not seen you yet. God knows you. God has seen you, but he says you have not even begun to bloom yet. You haven't even begun to blossom yet. And he's saying that since you made the decision to change, since you made the decision not just to change, but to be transformed from the inside out, he says that I am going to show a new you to the world. You let that past go. Let the hurt go, the hurt you even caused, the hurt that nobody understands that you hold yourself accountable more than anybody could ever hold you accountable for. God says, you now let that go and forgive yourself, and I want you to move forward. Move forward in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Mama B, I want to confirm something with you. Hallelujah. I want to confirm something with you. God said he spoke to you. Yes. I want to confirm you that it was God. Yes. God said that was me talking. The Lord told you to take some time away, yes. take some time by yourself. God said he wants you to put a few things down and spend time alone. God said that was me talking. That was God talking. Yes. And God says I want you to obey that word because that was my voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the results are going to be manifested openly. Hallelujah. 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 Hall yes. God is great. Yes, 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 Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Marilyn. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody, let's just stretch our hands to Sister Marilyn. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. Father, we thank you for the heart of God that we have standing before us. Father, we thank you in the same way that the intentions are pure, that the mind is pure, and the manifestation of her character is coming out onto the outside. It's overflowing now, God. I, the Lord, uh, Miss Marilyn, he says, I have been hearing your desire to show that person of sweetness, of charm and elegance that you are. God says, I am hearing you. I'm listening to you. And I have planted a seed on the inside of you that I want you to nourish, that I want you to water, that I want you to mother, that I want you to nurture. At some point in your life, you were you were so nurturing, God says, and you were so comforting, almost to the point of smothering. But God says, don't worry about smothering this time. I want you to take care of yourself in such a way that it seems selfish because you're so selfless that it seems like it's selfish. But I promise you that all it's doing is it's manifesting who you really are. God says you need to begin to speak to yourself kindly. You need to begin to see yourself literally go and walk into the mirror. If you have to every single day or at least every single time you remember, go and tell yourself who you are. Because you know on the inside who you are, but it's not always who you're being. And God says, I understand that some things have gotten in the way of who you are being. And that's why it's so hard for it to just flow out. That's why it's so hard for it to, to manifest because some things have invaded you. But God says, I want you to be like that woman who went to the unjust judge. And I want you to keep praying. And I don't want you to ever faint again. I don't want you to ever fail again. I don't want you to ever even have that thought of doubt in your mind. God says those words that Pastor Noel spoke about having a false criteria of belief, God says, I need you to now remove those flaws from yourself by speaking the word that I gave you deep on the inside over yourself. And trust your husband. Trust him. He cares for you so deeply. Trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody in the room, let's just bow our heads. Father, we thank you for health. We bless you for healing. We thank you for your word. And as these messages come forth, Father, we're going to receive your word. We're not looking at Pastor Al and Pastor Noel, but we're hearing from you. 
And we thank you for new health, for new life. We thank you, Father, for new instructions. And this entire congregation will be healthy. We will be healed. And we receive it. Hallelujah. In your matchless name. And we thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. As you're going through your week this week, if you're going through your, uh, your healing process, amen, your healthy healing process, speak the word, Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Just keep speaking. Every time you take your medicine, if you, if you, have, if you have medicine, Speak the word, Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Speak that over your body this whole week. And you feel a little pain? Say, Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Speak the word. Speak the name. You have something, you have an ailment going on in your body? Speak it. As you begin to speak this, the name, watch, watch what's going to start happening and transferring in your body. Speak the name speak the name that's what God told me as I'm going through my healing process also he told me every time I've taken a pill every time I take a medicine every time I'm doing something he's speaking my name I said I got 120 some more years to live I gotta do my part too but he told me every time something going on speak the name Jehovah Rapha my healer Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Hold on. As Prophet Misha was speaking to Marilyn, God said that's the breakthrough to your healing. Amen. Like they were saying earlier, healing can be in all areas. Wherever you believe in God for your healing on, say, God, you're my healer in that area. Amen. To God be the glory. Go ahead. Okay, I can't let you go today. There's somebody here. You don't even believe that God will heal you because you feel like the things that you've done, the person that you've been, and the person that you think you are, you're not worthy. If you're willing to be honest and say that that's me today, God said he will show you that you are worthy and you are forgiven and your healing is not dictated upon what you've done in the past if you're willing to admit it today we're going to believe God with you today and you can be free and I know you're here so I know that's the devil telling you don't you do it don't nobody want to know my business I don't need nobody to know how I feel about myself today. But if you really want to be free today, you have to respond. Okay. We're not going to wait no more. This is your moment. You've been asking God. You've been begging him. You've been begging him, and he's here for you right now. Okay. Okay. Don't oh. come up after. Right. Not today. Okay. Also, maybe someone online also. Oh, it might be somebody online, but uh, he said it was in here. He said it was in here? Yep. Amen. Well, she said it was in here. Amen. But if it is somebody online, I'm pretty sure that he told me it's in here. You're Amen. here, not online. Uh-oh. Yep. So you want to let your pride stop you from your freedom today once again because it's not the first time that you didn't. 
respond. Okay. Amen. Well, now it's time to receive our tithes and offerings. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we all we already went over different ways to give. Amen. I have an uh, awesome testimony. Everyone know that uh, for me, well, myself and Pastor Noel, we we we, we did our first fruits. And we would believe in God for certain things. And God manifested it double time. When I say double time, God manifested it double time. He did some things for us. I'm looking like, oh, my Lord Jesus. Then everyone know I believe in God. I did some things for myself, for my first fruits. Mm -hmm. God didn't just double it. He quadrupled what he gave, what, what I did. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to tithe on that, too. Well, so some people say, well, you already got it, so you can. No. Uh -huh. I tithed on what well, he told me on my first fruits. I tithed on my first fruit. Then now he's telling me now that God blessed me with some extra, some more good finances. When I say good, good, good. Jesus. No, good, good, gooder, gooder, however you want to say it. So I'm going a, I'm to a tithe on that, and I'm a, I'll do an offering on that also. I told you, every time I get a dollar, God going to get my dollar. Because mm. he showed me too much. How, how they say and go, oh, oh, you can't. Be God's giving, no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives to you. Just keep on giving, because it's really true. You can't be God's giving. No matter how you try. And, and I live by that. Amen. Yeah. I seen too much. I, I, I seen so much stuff going on in my life. And I practice this every day. Thank every you. day. Like I said, if I find a penny on, on the ground, I, to me, that's an that's a increase. I don't walk by no penny. I ain't too proud. Right. But I see a dime, I'm going to get it. Amen. It's mine. Healing is mine. Finances is mine. Increase is mine. Having a good marriage is mine. Having a good family is mine. Yes. Having good kids is mine. Having good grandkids is mine. Thank Having that. a good church is mine. Thank Having good that. friendships is mine. Everything is mine that I decree and declare today is mine. It's mine. It's and mine. you got to live in confidence like that. Thank you, Jesus. But as like I said, there's always a part that you have to do also. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I say, you know what? Hey, I'm just excited to give what God gave me. Yeah. Man. I'm, and I might do a first fruits on that too. Amen. I don't know. Because, hey, it, it, shoot, he going to keep doing this for me. <laughs> hey, I'm going to keep giving it to him. What, Jesus? My goal is, is once all my kids and everybody's taking care of my God's taking care of, my, my goal is to live off of 40%. That's my goal. That's my goal. That's, God, that's my goal. That's my goal. You know what I mean? God's doing some things in my life that, hey, no need. No need. I, I, I'm a living by non-suffer lack. But I really believe that God's going to do it. I truly believe that God's doing it. Amen. Sometimes I'll be like, God, you sure you want me to? To not work, he said, you don't need to work. You depend on me. Thank you, Jesus. And sometimes I'll be like, God, I need to go to work. He, and every time I make a decision to go what go to work, guess what? He take care of a need. Well, God, don't you see what myself and Noel's? You know what? And I was about to go to work. I was right before the uh, before he had me do the thirty one day fast. I was about to go back yeah. to work. And he said, wait until. You do first fruits. Yeah. And he showed up. That I have to go back to work. He said, I want you as a pastor to lead by example. You keep doing what I tell you to do. I'm sitting there like, God, and, and I was getting some money coming in. I'm like, God, you sure you want me to tithe? I'm like, I don't know if I want to tithe on that. Pastor Noel needs some extra cash or we need some groceries. We need this. And every time I get ready to do it, money just keep coming in. Just keep coming. Keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Money just keep coming. So I, I so hey, my goal is to depend on God 100%. 100%. Thank you, Jesus. 
I'm not going to go based on what the world is doing. I'm going based on what the kingdom of God tell me to do. Yeah. And if the kingdom of God tell me not to work, guess what I'm going to do? I'm not going to work. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to give my whole God, my whole self to God. And when he asks me to give, I'm going to give. Everybody know I don't have no problem giving. I don't have no problem so, so, uh, sowing seeds. I give to Apostle Wesley been seeing it. I keep giving more and more money away. He be like, man, you keep giving money away. Right. Noel be like, you keep giving money away. I ain't saying nothing. I ain't got no problem blessing people. Right. I ain't got Why no problem because God you keep blessing me. Right. So you got to get right. to the point where move forward in faith. Yes. Are we going to do this or we're not going to do it? Either you're going to live the way God told you to live or you're not going to live the way God told you to live. Thank move in Jesus. faith of what God's told you to do. Now, now, if God didn't tell you to quit your job, don't you do that. Don't you do that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you do that. And, and, if, and if, if, because your bills may be higher than you did. Jesus. My bills is low enough that I ain't got to work. Thank a you, A day Lord in my Jesus. life. Because <laughs> he want me to focus on ministry. He want me to focus on ministry and the Thank call that he has on my life. There's a lot of things that I want to do that God said, if you take care of me first, all those desires and those needs are gonna be able to, you're going to be able to take care of. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he's showing me. Lord Jesus, he's showing me. Hallelujah. Every time I have a thought to go back to work, he won't let me go Thank back. Thank you, Jesus. I keep obeying God. Thank you, Trusting Lord God. Jesus. You got something to say with that, babe? Mm -hmm. Nope, I'm somewhere else. You're somewhere else. Amen. Amen. Well, there's different ways to give. Amen. You can give by the mm -hmm. mobile app. Amen. You can give by cash app. You can give by Zelle. Uh, text to give, mail, or PayPal, or the church app right now is on iOS. By the end of the week, you should have the uh, Android version of it. Amen? Amen? Well, let's go ahead and stand. Let's do our professional faith. Amen. Amen. People online, we love y'all. We love yes. seeing y'all. Yes, One day, do. come on to the house. Amen? Come to the house. Amen? At least once a week, Thank twice a month, Lord. but at least start coming back. Amen? Amen. Thank it's good Jesus. to be with family. Thank Amen. Thank Jesus. Here we go. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I profess this day unto you, this day unto you that we have come into the land, come into the land in which you provided, which for, you us. provided for us. As I give to the kingdom of God with my tithes, offerings, first fruits, and gifts of love, I know the windows of heaven's blessing are open for me. I am now blessed, now blessed to be a blessing, be a blessing. with all the financial breakthroughs, all financial breakthroughs manifesting, in my life manifesting in my life for the body of Christ. Body of Christ. I live yes. in daily expectation yes. of an exceptional life. Exceptional. I profess unsuspecting people to go out of their way, to use their power, ability, and influence to help me. I believe I, believe I, receive, I receive creative wisdom, wisdom insight, insight, and opportunities mm -hmm. for, my life, for my life, my family, my, family, my, business, my business, and ministry. And ministry. This, is my professional faith, this is my professional faith, according to your word, to your word in Jesus' name, name. Amen. amen. It's now time to receive our tithes and offerings. Amen. amen. You can go and be seated and be guided by the ushers and greeters. Amen. And for the people online. We love seeing you guys sooner or later, whether well, sooner versus later. Yes, amen. amen. And uh, I'm Pastor Al. Pastor and we love doing ministry and life together for we walk by faith and not by sight. See you guys next week. To amen. God be the glory. Amen. Amen.